Hello. Tuesday, we're starting in the United States of America and year-over-year -year unit cost changes. Um, this is the Atlanta Fed. Yeah, so it's the, one of the Feds working out this deflation-inflation thing because they've got to vote on it and do things about it. So what they've got here is April, May and June, the unit cost changes are coming down for manufacturers and retailers and all firms there in the black spotted one. And so that's kind of deflationary. So they looked into it slightly further and later in the article they come to margins relative to normal. Now a margin is your profit margin. You've got your cost and then how much extra you can put on top uh, to sell the thing to make more profit. And they've been able to sell quite a lot sell for quite a lot more profit, put a lot of margin on. So what they're saying is here what the retailers and manufacturers can do, manufacturers less, retailers a bit more, they can put their margins down as opposed to putting the prices down. They will put their margins down and not make so much profit. So the prices won't actually yet come down until there is good uh, margin compression is what they call it. So the sellers are going to make less profit but prices aren't going to come down yet. So for the future of the stock market, you could say it'll hit the S&P first before it hits the CPI. We've got that. So it'll hit the, the, the S&P stock market because the, the companies won't be making as much profit. They will be taking the hit. CPI won't until the margin compression is really compressed down and then they have to reduce prices as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right, let's move on. I got the tip for this from Prag Cap, um, and this the idea of this goes back even further, right back into the 50s. This is fixed private investment, I won't go into it, but basically all it is, we don't have to know anything about it, but all we see on these charts, those vertical gray lines are the recessions, as they always are, that the FPI, doesn't matter what it is, comes down, um, to make a recession you could say or they are totally coincidental as in they go at the same time uh, the 72 one and, and believe me the the ones all before that this all the same but I've, I've taken these later ones to make the chart clearer um, FPI comes down to make the 72 recession then you can see it makes the 79 recession the 82 recession it comes down for the 91 recession the 2001 recession you see it cuts down across the gray and in the Great Recession, it cuts down across the Great Recession, but the FPI is still up. So um, there's n f for this as an indicator, the United States is all right for the moment and probably will be till the end of the year. As in, it will not. It might go from blah plus, which it probably will, down to blah, but it's certainly not going to go down to blah minus and then into recession for the rest of this year. It is going to hold up. This is tr from a BIS report, Bank of International Settlements report by Chiquetti, Chingchetti, or something, somebody like that, um, that's been bouncing around the internet an awful lot lately. Um, it's terribly difficult to read. That's why I've just got this one little thing out of it that's quoting it. Banks themselves have lost confidence in their peers, especially in the euro area. Sovereign debt holdings are an important drag on banks' efforts to regain the trust of their peers and the markets at large. Confidence in the banking sector is also undermined by the opaqueness of banks' internal ratings models, which measures asset riskiness and guides banks in setting their equity capital buffers. Now, let's pretend we don't understand any of that um, and just go back to the, head, the headline highlighted one banks themselves have lost confidence in their peers especially in the euro area it's like the start of it the 20, 2008 2009 credit crunch they're just not lending to each other because they all know that uh, deep in their books there is crap and they're just cutting slowly just cutting ties between the banks and that was the banking system banks lending to banks we've done this so many times so the central banks are having to come in and fill those gaps but the thing is it's a change of system 
and it's not a change of system that's organized it's a forced change of system that nobody knows what the consequences will be right let's move on so where are we going uh, this looks like this is an absolutely an op, uh, actually an op-ed in the New York Times by Krugman and I've just pulled it out to make a bit of a segue link to where we're going which is Europe so what should European leaders who have an overwhelming interest in containing the Spanish crisis if you caught up yeah. so what should the European leaders who have an overwhelming interest in containing the Spanish crisis do it seems obvious that European creditor nations need one way or another to assume some of the financial risks facing Spanish banks so that's a big ask isn't it no Germany won't like it but with the very survival of the euro at stake a bit of financial risk should be a small consideration but the thing is it's not a bit of financial risk for the if, if it was just the one billion the sorry the hundred billion or 60 billion whatever they're going to put in first into the Spanish banking system then that um, um, spread among the core nations of Europe is only a small consideration but it won't be 60 billion it'll be a hundred billion then 200 billion and that's just for Spain then there'll be Portugal there'll be Italy there's Greece that hasn't finished and if they can really stop it there well that might be the end of it if they come in really big and confident and strong and stop it there with Italy and Spain it's huge anyway it might stop things moving on to France and obviously the Landesbank and problems in Germany etc and of course Austria and all which Belgium Holland and all the rest of the banking problems but it is not a small consideration Krugman is being very naughty there but he's right to say but with the very survival of the euro at stake it is if they come in monstrously big and say we are all going to stand behind all of this it'll sound good for a while but um, people soon soon do the math and go bollocks anyway but no Europe's solution was to lend money to the Spanish government and tell that government to bail out its own banks oh of course they do because who was in charge of the Spanish banks the Spanish government who is in charge of the Spanish banks the Spanish government who is going to be in charge of the Spanish banks the Spanish government so who would you naturally lend the money to the Spanish banks or the Spanish government the Spanish government obviously but it took financial markets no time at all to figure out that this solved nothing that it just put Spain's government more deeply in debt and the European crisis now deeper than ever yes it is moving on through a headline here how to shift Germany out of the can't do mode an article by George Soros who comes up with some good ideas but it's not Germany's it is Germany's problem but to say it's all Germany's problem Germany can do something about Germany can do something about this it can do something about this but the problem is this and Germany knows it so if it goes in this much it's committed to go in this much which will swamp not just all the countries uh, it'll swamp all the countries of uh, the euro including Germany Holland everybody the problem is that big so do you go in and say yes or do you do you stay out and say no and have the very survival of the euro being at stake it's a very tricky political problem but the euro is a very tricky political construct next um, is the precursor to the um, next conference that's going to go on uh, Thursday and Friday I think it is EU could rewrite eurozone budgets and this is just saying all the ideas that they're going to talk about in these next two days um, it's just monstrous what they're going to talk about they're going to everything they're going to talk about everything all of them are going to talk about everything over two days and decide something no they're not and again look at right down at the bottom of this clip Germany will have to pay um, that's on the video 
if you follow the article, you can read the video from the, watch the video from the Financial Times. And that's what it does come down to. If the euro is to be saved short term, Germany will have to pay for that short term. If the euro is to be saved medium term, Germany will have to pay medium term. And I would say, and as I think they're working out, the, t the problems will be so big by medium term that Germany will not be able to afford to pay for it. Not even with all their Austria, Holland and all the rest of their core buddies. It's just too big a problem. Do I, did I finish there? No, a Wall Street Journal headline. I won't read you the whole article, but you can imagine France is the main obstacle to a Euro solution. And there you go. You blame Germany. Germany must do this. Germany must do that. But it's all political. And when they get together, you've got... It's not just France is the main obstacle. France is an obstacle. Germany is an obstacle. Finland and Norway and Sweden, who are semi-part of this thing, are a problem. Italy is a problem. Spain is a problem. Greece is a problem. Austria is a problem. <coughs> Fucking problems! And they ain't going to sort it out in two days. They're not going to sort it out in two months or two years. Not even in 20 years. But the problems are pack manning up very, very quickly now. So we'll say good luck to them, but really, it's not going to do them any, any good uh, at all. They're not going to do themselves any good at all, because it's an insolvable, insolvable problem. Insoluble, insolvable, both. Bye.